Hello, and welcome back to the Manufacturing Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Mayer. Today, we have an extraordinary guest joining us. Imagine if marketing had its very own superhero, one that's been through the manufacturing grind, felt the heat, and knows how to forge red-hot brands. Folks, that's exactly who we have today. The marketing mastermind, the champion of job shops, the empress of engagement, the amazing Emily Wilkins. Emily is a founder and CEO of Marketing Metal, which is the Iron Man suit that every small manufacturing shop needs. She's crafted a radical, no-nonsense process to help small shops build a killer brand they can be excited and proud to shout about from the rooftops. With her extensive background in marketing, sales support, and the nitty-gritty of job shops, she's seen their unique challenges and knows how to weld together a solution. But that's not all. Marketing Metal isn't just a company. It's a revolution. It's the anti-agency, defying norms and tearing down the outdated ways of marketing that have been rusting in the corner for ages. Based out of Holland, Michigan, Emily's company is all about turning your business into a marketing magnet. She doesn't just want you to look good. She wants you to draw in the right humans, land the dream projects, and create a real positive impact in the community and the world. Her approach is rapid, efficient, and with a clear focus that helps small businesses to level up and become the industry giants they are destined to be. Emily's not just the expert, she's also the herald. Speaking at industry conferences and on podcasts, she's here to spread the gospel of the magic that happens when job shops have a brand that's not just polished, but magnetic. Get ready to be energized, inspired, and equipped with the tools to make your business thrive. Without further ado, let's dive into the world of marketing metal with this spectacular Emily Wilkins. Emily, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? Uh, I am great. Thank you so much for that incredible intro. <laughs> You're very welcome, Emily. It's it's well deserved and for those of you listening out there. Emily and I, we've never met in person. We connected on LinkedIn, and she's actually helped me through some of my marketing challenges uh, for my brands that I have, and and she's just a, a an absolute whiz when it comes to making marketing the most simplistic part of your processes. So uh, super excited to have you here today. We're going to talk a lot about culture, of course, in manufacturing, but how marketing plays a role in that. Are you excited for our journey today, Emily? Well, yeah, of course. (laughs) Duh. So (laughs) Emily, tell us a little bit more about Marketing Metal that I may not have uh, mentioned in in the intro there. What what do you guys do and and how do you get it done? Uh, Yeah. So, I mean, you summed it up fantastically. The way that we approach it is different from a lot of other agencies. And I, I designed it that way because of my experience working with job shops, both on the agency side and as the internal marketing, you know, the one marketing person in, in the job shop. Yeah. Um, I just, I noticed a big disconnect. It seemed, you know, a, a lot of agencies, I think, try to rely on the customer to provide the inputs needed. And that is not, it doesn't work for job shops. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and, you know, and they just don't understand what a job shop is or who their customers are and how sure. to, you know, how to approach their marketing and and what they need. And so I, I've really just taken all of my experience and I turned it into this, you know, s- simple process that kind of that leads them through the journey and really makes it easy for them and, you know, easy to understand, easy to, for us to execute. I, it's more of like a, kind of done with you approach. Yeah. I, I really lead them through the entire process. So, and I will vouch for that. You really do. It's, it, it may, you, you uncover things in such a way that it's almost, it, it's not smacking you in the face, right? It's a, a very <laughs> gentle process, but it, you make it so simplistic that people have got to think, oh my God, how did I not realize that before? Right. And, and that's what I love about your process. 
So Emily, tell us a little bit about your journey in manufacturing. You, you've worked for shops and, and what has the culture been throughout your, your journey in, in the industry? Uh, you know, where was the culture when you started? Where do you think it is now? And, and where do you see it going in the future? Yeah, um, my, my cultural journey in manufacturing has been extremely random. <laughs> uh, I've worked for giant corporations. I, I, you know, I worked for GE for a little bit. I worked for medium sized corporations and in the toy industry where, you know, we had a lot, of, most of our manufacturing was in China. Okay. Um, so there was that kind of cultural aspect too, of the, you know, the international, the, you know, the, the Chinese culture is a lot different from ours. So, right. you know, being able to communicate with with my project managers over there and making sure that we were on the same page with things. And I've also worked for tiny shops that have, <laughs> you know, four people working in, you know, welding and a bending machine and a robotic, robotic welder, things like that. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's been been different. And and of those small shops. I've had very different experiences as well because I've worked for a few. Right. And the the first one that I really worked for was my it was my senior thesis project in college. So I was a I was a co-op student and I I was tasked with building a marketing plan and a brand for a new um a line of equipment for the marine maintenance industry. Okay. And it was a really small shop. It's um here here in Zealand, Zealand, which is right next to Holland. Okay. Um, and it was just the, you know, I, I was in an office with the owner and our CAD, you know, engineer, uh, who was also a co-op student at the time. <laughs> um, and then I would, you know, wander out in the shop and, and help out with stuff. Cause I am not someone who is good at sitting at my desk for <laughs> eight hours. <laughs> <straight. laughs> um, <laughs> and, and that experience was very, it was great. It was a very, uh, the owner was very, wanted to have me involved, you know, okay. so he would explain things to me all the time. He would tell me about his business and how it evolved and, you know, why he goes after certain customers and how he ended up in the niche, niche he was in. Um, cause he mostly was in like the arcade kind of business. And when that started to, you know, fall off a little bit, he pivoted more into, um, like amusement parks and, different things like that. So yeah, it was, it was a really a learning experience uh, and very hands-on, very, you know, questions were always welcome. He was just really took the time to educate me in every way possible. And, and I appreciated that so much. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And he was very, you know, wanted us to be independent because it was, you know, three of the five other people that worked there were, were in college. So, and he, he was very, um, he, uh, you know, gave us the, the space to figure things out on our own, which I also really appreciated, yeah. but he would also give us, you know, give us feedback and help us with things as we needed it. So it was a, it was a good balance. I've also worked for shops where the owners, they were, very out of touch and just, you know, wanted to rake in the cash and didn't care about their people. I mean, they really, yeah. on, it, it was just a really not good environment. Yeah. Um, and I didn't last long there. It's <laughs> shocking. Yeah. Shocking. Those um, places tend to have higher turnover rates. <laughs> yeah. They just, you know, they had so many amazing people working there and, and they just didn't recognize them at all. Right. Uh, the owner would call me the girl. <laughs> like, no. okay, thanks. <laughs> um, oh my yeah, God. Don't, <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Anybody who's listening. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't don't call her the girl. <laughs> wow. Yeah, or or the kid, you know, mm -hmm. like don't do that. It's yeah. uh, it's demeaning and it's yeah, it's it's not good for anyone. <laughs> it makes so, you look like an asshole. Yeah, absolutely. Have you seen a, a a shift in the culture since you joined the industry to where it is now? I I think it really depends on the company. Sure. You know, some some companies are certainly 
progressing and trying to do the best they can. They're learning, they're, you know, actively going out and trying to, you know, learn of new ways of doing things and try them and, you know, get insights from people. And then there are other ones that are, you know, like the one I just mentioned that right. think that they're God's gift to mankind and don't care about anyone else. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're in a slow moving industry, right? Uh, when it comes yeah. to adopting people strategies, I think uh, our industry is great at, you know, adopting new technology and pivoting with that. But I, I think it struggles when it comes to some of the people strategies. It's like turning the Titanic almost. So that being said, do you see a future where uh, the industry is more culturally healthy overall? I hope so. <laughs> I'm a, um, you know, I'm an eternal optimist. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to think so for sure. Okay. I think there's a lot of good change happening there. Like I said, there are a lot of manufacturing companies out there that are making waves and um and trying to do things different and i think that what they're doing is uh is working okay well so <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe we'll get into uh more examples uh as a conversation progresses here um tell us about your thoughts on how marketing can impact company culture and and really vice versa because i think that they're they're so interrelated um but what's your take on that they are so interrelated i mean they're you can't yeah you can't have one without the other i mean your your marketing really does inform your culture and vice versa mm -hmm. um and if it's you know if it's done right hopefully it's uh helping you um, you know, turn that Titanic to a better place, right? Your marketing yeah. should be aspirational. It should be, you know, what your it should reflect the vision that you want for yeah. your company. Do you have any stories of how a marketing campaign positively impacted the culture or or even vice versa, how a positive company culture had directly contributed to the success of a marketing campaign that you were working on? Oh, definitely. Um I mean, the latter for sure, like that's, that's a huge part of my process is really finding out what, you know, what the personality is like, um, you know, what kinds of things that they do differently, what, what are their values that they rally around, um, and bringing that out in their marketing, because that's going to help them attract more of those same people Yeah. Uh, on the former of how does marketing impact the people is i I worked with, I had the um, honor and privilege to work with an awesome heat trading company in in Meadville, Pennsylvania okay. called Peters Heat Trading. All right. Shout uh, out to Peters. Sh shout out to Peters. They're amazing. So Doug Peters started this company in 1979 with no experience. <laughs> and no just, kidding. Uh, he was a, I think he was an insurance salesman um and he was just talking to people in the community and asking what they needed and that was the thing that they needed they um they had a huge uh manufacturing e economy in that area and they were making it was the uh the zipper okay was made there no kidding um, that was one of their big things and <laughs> tooling i mean they were a big tool and die area so and they just kept saying over and over again, we need heat treating. We need somebody that can do heat treating. So he started a heat treating company That's <laughs> and awesome. um, hired somebody that was an expert in that and, um, you know, and evolved and grew the company from there. And they're, they're a huge company now. They have almost a hundred employees and two, th four facilities now. Wow. Um, and so when I met so his daughter and son-in-law are taking over the company so when i met uh his daughter diana uh she you know was was feeling really overwhelmed um with all the hats she was wearing and marketing was one of them and you know just kind of like she was caught in this hard place of you know wanting to honor her 
the achievements of her her parents, but also bring the company into you know into the future and really um, modernize and professionalize things. And um, so I and and they had you know had put up a website like seven years ago or whatever that was you know it was fine. It had good content. It showed. Uh, it showed all their services and, but it wasn't exciting, right? There wasn't, uh, sure. and, and hiring and <clears throat> retaining employees was a huge issue for them as okay. it is for all small manufacturers, right? I mean, all manufacturers in general, but right. especially small ones. And so when I was talking to her, she was sitting, you know, we, we were uh, virtual. So uh, she was sitting at a conference table in their in their conference room and uh they have a sign behind her that said give a damn and i was asking her about it and that was their whole philosophy was you know that that's who we are we give a damn about our work we give a damn about each other we care about um our community uh you know they're very active in their community we care about ourselves you know that that self-respect is a huge Mm -hmm. huge thing um so i i just was kind of (laughs) <laughs> laying in bed one night, not able to sleep. Thinking about <laughs> <laughs> Never happens to me. Um, and I was thinking like, well, heat trading, give a damn, hot damn, uh, give a hot damn. <laughs> I like so, it. Yeah. So uh, that became their tagline. And, uh, you know, she loved it, was worried, of course, that the older generations weren't going to going to like it as much, but, um, but everyone loved it. And we made these t-shirts for their company. We came, we came on site and did some, uh, filming with them a couple days of filming. And, uh, and the first day was a company picnic. We okay. ended this way. So we could get some, do a recruiting video and show them having fun and whatever. Cause they have these really cool company picnic every year. Yeah. And when we got the t-shirts out, people were so excited. That's <laughs> it was awesome. so cool to see. Like they were just, you know, passing them around to each other and putting them on. And uh, and we went to an event the next day, uh, a county fair. And a couple of the employees were there for that. And they, some of them were wearing the shirt. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I love that story. Uh, how many yeah. of your ideas as a creative person come to you? Late at night, as you can't sleep. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> Why? Why can't I sleep? <laughs> I I understand that as well. My wife is like, you're still awake? Come on. The sun's going to be yeah. up soon. <laughs> yeah, that's that whole ADHD thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Like we're all night owls. <laughs> so you mentioned uh, in the first question, right, that that – you hope that things change in the industry, right? Um, So how do you think that we could address through marketing some of the outdated and detrimental uh, ideas that, that the industry has when it comes to culture specifically? Uh, Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I don't know if I'm the one that has the answer to it. Um, I, I do think that you uh, can kill two birds with one stone uh, for to use a terrible reference, but um, (laughs) (laughs) I think, yeah, thanks. Uh, I think in your marketing effort, you can also uh, address your culture, right? Um, I think that by pulling your people into the process when you're developing your brand and and marketing content, whatever, you know, I I think that there's a big opportunity to bring the team together and and by doing that, you're you're gonna learn a lot a about what your team thinks of your company and b what they want to think about your company right yeah um and just by bringing them in and asking them for their input you are showing that you care about that's great their opinions and and that's i mean that's such a huge part of 
of a good culture, right? It's it's really just showing people that you care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that they absolutely. are valuable, right? Showing yeah. that they're valuable. And valuable just beyond, you know, operating a machine right. or, or measuring a, a part or whatever the case may be. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever in your this amazingly radical process that you've created, have you faced a, a situation where a company's culture was so brutally misaligned with market demands that it jeopardized the success of the marketing strategy that you were developing with them? And if so, how did you address that? Uh, I mean, I think that my brand attracts people that want to change. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I don't, I don't end up with a lot of the terrible owners. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, in my past work experiences, for sure, you know, I, I was tasked with doing their marketing and, and it was hard. Yeah. Um, it did make it really hard because I, you know, I believe that you need to be honest and authentic in your marketing. And when there's not a lot of good things to say about the way that your company is run, then it's hard to be honest and authentic, right? Absolutely. Um, let's tell me more positive stories, right? Um, <laughs> uh, let, let's talk about uh, leadership in, in manufacturing and, and how leadership, the, the role that leadership in the industry plays in not only a, a positive company culture, but also, uh, you know, success on the marketing side. Yeah. I mean, change has to start with leadership and it can't just be leadership saying, okay, we're going to change. It has to be leadership actually making the change. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of the same same way I feel about politics. <laughs> and we can talk about it all day long, but absolutely. If you're not doing it, then shut up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we probably should steer clear of politics. But <laughs> On this episode, sure. Maybe, maybe we'll have a follow-up political episode, but we, we've done a pretty good job. I, of I do think that it's, it's such an underlying issue of culture, right? Absolutely. We're so divided. Yeah. Over our politics. And it's, it's so, it's just, it's just a distraction. Talk to us about uh, portraying companies in a positive light. You said that your, your clients are, are looking for, uh, to make change or, or, uh, you know, progressive in, in one way, shape or form, I think. And talk to us about how, as they're going through that process of progress and whether that's internally with lean or uh, creating new people strategies, how can you help shine that positive light and maybe tell us a story or two about uh, companies that you've worked with that have been able to do that? That have been able to change their culture? Yeah. I'm Well, yeah, Peter's is a great example. Um, and I, I did just talk to Diana uh, recently and she told me that, that uh, she noticed a, a difference in the way that the team feels about their jobs, mm. which is, I, I thought was really cool. Yeah. Um, they're, it, it made it feel more legitimate, you know, seeing, seeing professional, really nicely done videos with these awesome interviews you know, I, that really made them feel like, wow, this is a really cool company. And, yeah. Um, and we talked a lot about uh, in the interviews, we talked a lot about, uh, you know, what the parts that they make are used for. And, um, you know, I think that's a really important thing to uh, to make sure that your team sees and understands is, you know, what are these widgets actually being used for and how are they making our world go around because yeah. everything that you make is you know is contributing to the world in one way or another so um and being able to see that gives your work purpose yeah absolutely and that's what culture and engagement is all about right is is feeling yeah. that purpose and and being measured on that purpose uh what are some other companies that you've worked with that that really stand out to you culturally another recent project that i did was uh, a robotics integrator they're they're a newer company they're they're just founded three maybe four years ago now three okay. years ago 
and they uh it's two guys that uh it's Colwell automation in okay. uh, in montezuma iowa wow. um i didn't even know that was a place i know i didn't either <laughs> <laughs> uh, um they're two uh two guys that were worked for other larger integration outfits and just really didn't like the way that the bigger companies approached customer service and their team you know they just were they felt like a number they felt like uh you know they were being asked to leave their homes and their families for extended periods to to go on site with you know with customers and not being recognized for that at all you know it's not just about the money right yeah like like paying for that time is is one thing but you know making an effort to say like well thank you you know thank you for taking that time away from your family (laughs) we really appreciate that like that's that's going to go further than the money right Mm -hmm. so that they were just really fun to work with. We actually did a, a little exercise with their team. <laughs> it's called Brands Against Mundanity. If you've ever played with uh, <laughs> Against Humanity. Yeah. Uh, so was, I found this game that Brands Against Mundanity. And uh, so we played it with their their team just to come up with, you know, ideas for content and, and help me get a better... Uh, feel for their personality as well so that I could, you know, build them a brand that would match and feel authentic to them. And um, yeah, just a really cool team. They, that's uh, awesome. you know, they take good care of their people. They, they go, you know, go out for, you know, to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, all of those things. And it's a, it's a small team, but they have a big vision and they're uh, you know, they're determined and they're really, Really great guys, really down to earth, you know, very, very family oriented. They've had kids come out to their shop and uh, from the local school and, you know, they're doing all the right things. That's they're, awesome. They're small but mighty, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So how, uh, as part of your process, how do you create a marketing strategy w- w- without giving away the secret sauce of marketing metal? You know, how, how do you align uh, marketing strategies with, core values and, and the company culture as, as a whole, you know, what, if you can tell us, what are some of the steps in the process that you take to, to ensure that that happens? Yeah. Um, I, I don't think I could give away all of my special sauce if I tried in, in <laughs> you know, an hour long episode, whatever that's going to be. Uh, it's really, I mean, it starts with listening. I, I really just listen and okay. I ask a lot of questions. I ask a lot of why. <laughs> yeah. Why do you do this? And just really try to boil it down to what, you know, what is it that makes them unique? Sure. And different. And and then, yeah, try to bring that out. And And it's not just the visuals. You know, people think that branding is your logo. Right colors that are on your website. It's the your brand is everything. Your brand is it's your you know it's like your company's personality, and and your personality manifests in a thousand different ways. Right, it's in the clothes that you wear, and the people that you talk to, and the shows that you watch, and the you know books you read, or whatever. Like it's all of those things yeah. together. It's. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I I've always really been a, a big picture person. So I think branding make like made perfect sense for me because it's, it's very much a big picture thing and you have to be able to see all of those pieces and, you know, bring them together to make something holistic and cohesive. That makes total sense. I I mean, so as somebody who's been through the process with you, or at least the front end of the process with you, you know, I you asked me questions that I'd never thought of before, right? And I'm a one man band um, with two brands. That's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, you asked me questions that were 
tough questions, fair questions, but tough questions made me really get outside of my comfort zone, right? Is a process similar for five to 25 people as it is for 50 to a hundred people? I mean, do you, do you kind of walk the same walk with, with regardless, or do you customize your approach based on uh, the organization that you're speaking with? Yeah, good question. It's, it's a bit of both. Okay. Um, the, the start of the process is typically the same. Mm-hmm. Um, I might have some different questions for, you know, a bigger company, yeah. but, um, the start is, is typically the same. And then with, you know, with some of those bigger companies, like with Peters and even, even with Colwell, the, the part where I get to know their team is really the, you know, the on site like video and photography capturing yeah. part of the, of the, the process. If that, you know, if that's part of their package that they, that they get. Yeah. And, and do you do the video yourself? I mean, uh, I know you're talented, but how talented are you? Are you like a videographer as well here? Uh, no, I have a, I have a videographer that I work with, but, um, I, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a big actor. <laughs> I, I try to dabble and I do, I do capture some B-roll when we're, okay. uh, when we're on site, but I, I don't know how much of it actually gets used. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, I, but yeah, I definitely rely on the expertise of my videographer. So Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and so how long do you spend with the team? I mean, so you, you have an intro call, you, you have, you know, your, your, uh, you gather the information, you create a proposal. Uh, if they go with you, how long do you spend on site with these uh, people, uh, you know, creating the, and, and furthering the strategy that you've proposed to them? Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't call it a proposal. It's, oh. a, it's a brief. A brief. Uh, my bad. It's my bad. On its own. Yeah. You know, it's meant to be valuable on its own and they can take it and run with it if they want. Yeah. Um, so it depends on what package they land in. Um, I have three packages, you know, small, medium and large. Sure. Uh, sure. And so on the smaller side, it's typically not anything on site um okay it's you know messaging or a simple website or um a sales process sometimes um you know i think that that is a big part and to go on a little tangent here yeah um (laughs) i think that's what that's one thing that's really different about job shops and the way that they need to approach their marketing is that they're, you know, one, one great customer can change the game for them. Right. Yeah. Um, so it, they don't need this like massive marketing approach, yeah. right. They don't, they don't need to spend all this money every month on, on search engine optimization because that's probably not how their customers are going to find them. Sure. You know, like they all want to be first on Google, but it's not, that's not really that important sometimes. Yeah. When you're a sales driven company, that's, you know, really relies on relationships, you know, the, the SEO stuff doesn't, doesn't matter as much. <laughs> it's not where you're going to get your customers. Yeah. From, so, so that's one tangent, but no, I like uh, it. <laughs> I like, well, and that's one thing you helped me with, right. Is uh, I was sending out these mass emails and uh, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and not having a, a very high success rate. And that was one of the tough co- questions you asked, right? And when I actually looked at the data, it was like, oh yeah, I'm not being effective, right? Um, right. And you helped me redirect that energy into just having those conversations, right? So I, I definitely see the the value in, in what you just said as mm-hmm. it relates for to a job shop. I, that That's, yeah, it, it makes total sense. Yeah, yeah. So the question was, <laughs> how much time do I spend? So, um, so yeah, the, the smaller package typically is not on site, okay. um, unless they're they're local. I'll I'll go do a shop tour or something. But um, uh, the middle package can sometimes be, uh, you know, a day on site, mm-hmm. uh, and then the big package I've done like 
three to four days on site. Okay. And both of those were like, like the, the really big, <laughs> package. <laughs> the big, the big package expands depending on what, what you need. But um, so yeah, I mean, it, it again, it, it depends on what you're looking for and how much of a splash you want to make with your brand and you know how big of a vision you have and how fast you want to get there yeah uh that makes total sense um have you ever run across situations where companies tried to sugarcoat their true culture uh for the sake of appealing to customers um I don't think so. I don't know. Like I said, I I think I just attract people that are that do want to be the best they can be. You yeah. know, I, I think that's the people that I attract. I don't know. No, I I love that, and that just speaks to how good of a uh, you are at your job because you've branded to the right audience, right? You know who your audience is, and right. and, and you've gone down that road. Talk to right, us. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't want to work with with the companies that don't want to. <laughs> So want to say things, right? <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that. How can uh, manufacturers who make, you know, uh, job shops in particular, how can they uh, identify their ideal customer? Right. Because a lot of them, I don't know if they have that capacity to to really conceptualize that. How, how do you coach them through creating that uh, that part of the process? Yeah. Um, I, I try to make it really simple and bring it down to, you know, think back about what are the projects that have been most successful for you. Okay. Um, both, you know, both in terms of how you felt about it and how your team felt about it and the way that it went and in terms of profitability. Okay. Um, and, you know, kind of list them out and then figure out which you know, which projects, which customers landed on both lists, yeah. which, you know, which ones were most enjoyable, which ones were most profitable and whatever ones end up in, uh, in both places, those are probably your ideal customers. Um, mm. And there's also a component of, you know, what do you want to be doing? Right. Yeah. Um, you know, is there, are there certain in industries that you're more interested in? Um, you know, do you have a lot of, people on your shop floor that are interested in certain industries or, you know, different things like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I get that. And, and uh, you mentioned earlier on um, about, you know, websites, um, the, the kind of standard website for job shops specifically is mm -hmm. a list of capabilities and a list of their machines and their contact information. Uh, is yeah. that, still kind of the norm and and how do you coach them beyond just that as as uh not only a uh a lead generator for for customers but also to attract employees and and the right humans as as we talked about earlier oh it's definitely still a thing <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> they all look like that um and, i mean some are better than others but uh yeah, they're all pretty basic and and say a lot of the same things and and that makes you a commodity. Right. Right. You're the same as all you're the same as the shop next door. And there's nothing to differentiate you except for the you know, the price that you provide, right? Yeah. You, you get an RFQ, your neighbor gets an RFQ. If yours is five dollars cheaper, the customer goes with you. <laughs> you know, if, and your timeline is two days faster, whatever. You know, like those are the only determining factors. Yeah. Um, what I try to help them with is to really bring their personality out and um, and figure out if there's a different, you know, if they have a different approach to the work. Got it. Um, your process is a it can be a differentiator. Mm -hmm. Um. And especially now, like I, I was just talking to a shop yesterday about, um, you know, I think there's a lot of young engineers that haven't spent any time on shop floor yeah. that don't actually know how to build things. Right. Uh, so by just taking their RFQ and turning out a quote for them, you're probably missing a lot. Like, I mean... <laughs> 
and and uh experienced machinists will tell you this all the time like why are they making it like this? You know, <laughs> they, they look at a, at a print and they're like, what is, what are they doing here? So don't just wonder that, like ask, yeah. right? So I, I think um, that's one way that I kind of try to help them differentiate is by uh, like figuring out what they can do differently with their process that will really set them apart. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, the values that they, uh, that they care about the again that personality you know mm-hmm. um we are attracted to certain personality like certain types of people are attracted to certain types of people that's just how it works and and the same with brands right so yeah. certain types of brands are going to attract a certain type of customer so so really trying to bring that out um and uh, another way that i help them differentiate is by you know, industry and types of, of, um, projects and services that they're proficient in. Okay. Um, So, you know, are you really heavy in aerospace? Are you really heavy in food and beverage or pharmaceutical or whatever? Um, you know, and trying to bring that out a little bit in your, in your website. Um, but also, you know, that can be, that can be a, a way to approach your marketing too. Yeah. Um, you know, active marketing, like ads and uh, trade shows and that kind of thing. Like, um, you know, the more focused you are on, on a specific area, the, uh, the more targeted you can be in your, mar- in your marketing. So. Yeah, absolutely. How can manufacturers uh, use marketing strategies uh, to, to, to promote their positive culture a little bit better. Um, you know, instead of those static, you know, list of capabilities and machines type pages, not, not yeah. just a website, but branding and marketing as a whole. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, what kinds of people do you want to attract? Yeah. Like that's, that's the first question. And then what do those people want <laughs> to yeah. have a job? Right where do they hang out and what are they doing now that, uh, that you're going to try to tempt them away from. Right. Yeah. Cause if, you know, for the most part, if you want good people, they're probably not, uh, unemployed. Probably. Yeah, probably not unemployed. <laughs> so, uh, who are you going to poach them from? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but really, I mean, there's like, there's people working at, you know, McDonald's that are hardworking people that are smart and probably bored and might yeah. want to try something different, you know, and a lot of the, a lot of the jobs that job shops have are trainable, right? Yeah. Uh, it's the, it's the personality and the drive that are not trainable. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I will always remember, um, IQ manufacturing, they're um, sadly not a customer of mine because they have a great internal marketing person. <laughs> um, but I I was hanging out with them at IMTS last year and with the owner and the marketing person who is uh, Haley Hopped. Yeah, um, the one. hack girl, right? And, and I don't girl, mean yeah. to say the girl, but that's <laughs> her brand on that, LinkedIn. That's her, yeah, that's her term. So right. that's okay. Right. Um, yeah, so the, the hat girl, Haley is great. Um, and we've gotten to hang out a few times, but um, but I was talking to them at, at IMTS and Chris told me uh how he found Haley working at McDonald's. <laughs> no kidding. And he knew that she was, you know, a hard worker. I think she had applied, but but because she had that experience on her resume, he was like, Well, that told me that she's a hard worker. She was there for several years. Yeah. And I just thought that was a really interesting insight. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. And there's, there's so many jobs like that out there. Like, you know, and these companies are, they're boring. <laughs> like manufacturing is more exciting and interesting. So yeah, I think, uh, I think there's a big opportunity. I, I, I got a shot uh, early in my career. Um, I was building houses and, one of our distributors came to the job site um, 
and offered me a job. Right. And, and that's really what launched my career was this guy said, you work hard. You know what you're talking about. Why don't you come sell the stuff that you use every day? Right. You can talk to yeah. people. And uh, that's how I got my entrance into uh, the industrial world. And mm -hmm. so people just sometimes need that shot. And maybe it's, you know, your server or bartender or McDonald's or, or one of your contractors. Right. I, I mean, it, yeah. everybody just needs a shot. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. And, um, and, uh, I listened to, um, oh shoot, I need to find his name. Okay. So at INTS also last year, uh, I did the job shop workshop. Mm -hmm. I had a couple you know, some speaking events that were specifically for job shops. And one of them was uh, Chris Sarnak mm -hmm. wrote Winning the War on Talent. And he was talking a, a similar thing, talking about like, you know, your local oil change place <laughs> or like different places like that um, where people are probably not making as much money as what they would make on a manufacturing floor. They just don't know. Yeah. Right. They just don't realize that there's this other opportunity out there that could be better for them. Um, I, I I was in an Uber in Long Beach during West Tech. Uh, it had to have been 19, I guess. And my Uber driver had been a computer programmer uh, working mm -hmm. with code. Got burnt out, ended up mm -hmm. hating the industry. Uh, so we started driving for Uber. We started talking about programming manufacturing jobs. And mm -hmm. he said, I'd be interested in checking it out. So I invited him to West Tech. I introduced him to a couple of people uh, the next day. And he ended up getting a job with uh, a manufacturer in Southern California somewhere. Um, and loved it right sent me a note that is the coolest story <laughs> but it, it, it's it's those kinds of people that we're going to fill the industry with right we've had a ton yeah. of layoffs in the last couple of years in tech companies why haven't oh, we yeah. gone out and and right. captured those super intelligent people for yes. our industry yes that are probably all sick and tired of sitting at a computer <laughs> absolutely Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And it all day it sucks. It does. It's horrible. Don't realize it until you have <laughs> an hour a day. Exactly. Well, and and they're paying out the nose for housing in Silicon oh, Valley. Yeah. I mean, beautiful place to live, but it's super expensive. They can mm -hmm. move to places and have a lower cost of living and a higher quality of life in this yeah. industry. And we just, as an industry, I think we need to target those people more. Yeah. Um, also, immigrants. Absolutely. Uh, you know, they are, they're so hardworking. They, they want to make, they want the American dream, right? That's why they're here. Yep. <laughs> um, I, we had a guest, uh, and I say we, as in, I'm not the only person who's doing this podcast. I had a guest uh, <laughs> on the show, um, Steve Tomasi in Boston. He hires any immigrant that comes to him in, mm -hmm. in reality, he, he will, uh, he gets messages on LinkedIn. I've started funneling people who reach out to me from other countries on LinkedIn and say, Hey, I'm just looking for a job. Here's my mm -hmm. experience in the country that they come from, but he takes it a step further. Emily, he mm -hmm. then puts their flag on his wall. And cool. so he currently has, at the time we recorded, he had 18 flags on his wall from different co countries of people that he's helped immigrate to the U.S. That's massive. That's yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And shout out to uh, my girl, Allie G. Yeah. Uh, Alicia G. Gilpin, uh, her company, PLC. Um I can't think of what it actually stands for. I'm sorry, <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> um, but you know, she's she does that too. She's hiring a lot of immigrants and um and she texts that we're on this group chat and she texts us when she gets these messages and and they're so grateful for for the work and for you know being recognized for their talents and appreciated and it's uh it's really cool. 
she sounds like a, uh ali g sounds like a pretty amazing person i, I another she person is. i've never met but from that story you just told to her plc kits for kids that she's doing yep. Like it's just, it's mind boggling, uh, the things that she's doing for the industry. Um, I, I think it's really neat. Allie's amazing. You should have her on the show. All right. Uh, Allie, if you listen, please join <laughs> the, the podcast. Um, and it'll be interesting, <laughs> Emily, to hear how many people hear this and then send me a message. Please have Allie on. I could also probably just make an introduction. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then if they're going to make it that easy for me, uh, then let's do it. I mean, uh, <laughs> I didn't know it was that easy. You, you just know people. I mean, I can't like guarantee that she's going to say yes, but <laughs> I can make it that <laughs> um, I would love yeah, the introduction. And... If you could make it, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, she has a podcast as well. They're, they're, her podcast with Nikki Gonzalez is uh, Automation Ladies. Right. And on that same note, uh, women are a great place to recruit as well. Absolutely. Um, my my friend Alexandria Trusov, who's another just outstanding industrial marketer, um, she's in the in the forging sector. Okay. Um, and Forge and Foundry, and she told me about a campaign that she did with. Uh, for one of her clients where they had, she hired two women voice actors to do a radio commercial uh, talking about how cool her manufacturing job is. And, you know, the one girl's like, what manufacturing? That sounds terrible. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and then the other girl's like that. Yeah, it's actually really cool. Uh, so, I mean, it's, I think just in the case that we were talking about before, like, I think that the general public of America does not, realize how many cool jobs there are in manufacturing yeah um and, and on that same token it you know if you are going to actively pursue hiring women which i highly recommend i've i've had one very uh intelligent shop owner say uh when he brings uh the more women he brings in the more uh the more the men work <laughs> <laughs> It sets the bar higher. <laughs> it, it, does. it certainly sets the bar higher. Um, and and the more they want, they want to come in and be, you know, I, I mean, women are wonderful, right? Yeah, we're great. Absolutely. Uh, so <laughs> we're good to have around. We're fun. Uh, I think if, if you do target women to hire, which I certainly recommend, um, you know, and even just for men, but be you have to be um you have to be flexible yeah with hours you have to realize that people have families yeah and um you know they're they're gonna work hard when they're there and if they need to leave to go pick up a kid then they should be able to do that absolutely like, yep. yeah if, if they need to leave at three uh let them go pick up the kid from school if a kid's sick let them go home don't punish them yeah. for that yeah uh, absolutely yeah um so what what's next for you i mean in the the pre-recording time of our conversation today i know that you're speaking at fabtech which is super awesome i'm excited yeah. to hear you speak there uh what else is what else is upcoming i mean you you're on podcasts you're you're speaking at conferences all the time what what's on the docket for emily and marketing metal coming up Emily needs to stop saying yes to things. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a that's a thing that Emily is working on. <laughs> Personal growth. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's exactly <laughs> personal growth. Um, yeah, so I'm speaking of Fabtech. Um, the Advanced Manufacturing Expo in Grand Rapids is coming up yeah. uh, August 9th and 10th. Mm -hmm. uh, Grand Rapids is an amazing city. It's on you know 35 minutes away from uh the best sand dunes you'll ever see in your life okay maybe a bit biased but i love lake michigan yeah it's a beautiful um, lake it's beautiful it's just a it's a great time to be here august is perfect it's um hot wonderful um <laughs> the beaches are great <laughs> but it's humid and the mosquitoes are the size of cadillacs that time of year that's yeah. 
Details. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, yeah, depending on the day, uh, the, you know, the beach is lovely and not muggy okay. and not mosquitoes okay. either. Um, you you might get flies. You might get horse flies the size of Cadillacs, but um, all right. Uh, just look out for the east wind. Just look at the weather. <laughs> if if there's an east wind, don't go to the beach because you'll get eaten alive. Okay, good to know. Horse flies. Good to know. Otherwise, it should be good. Uh, there's a tip of the day <laughs> right there. I love it. Yep. Uh, so you got yeah. AME, you got Fabtech. Anything else? Yep. Um, I will be at the Empowering Women in Industry Conference in October, which is also in Chicago. Awesome. Um, it's going to be really fun. I'm I'm on a panel with a couple other dynamic, amazing women. Yeah, that's and awesome. I'm not saying yes to anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, then now, let me ask you a question: Are you going to the Whim Summit in San Diego? I'm not. You are no. not. Okay. All right. No. Well, I'll be there because that's a quick drive for me. Um, yeah. Well, San Diego's amazing. I wish I was going. Yeah. When is it? Uh, I want to say September, late September, early October, something like that. Oh, yeah, definitely not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fall conference season for for our industry, yeah. right? We've got the spring season and the fall season. Right. Yeah. I I go to some of the local WIM events. Okay. Um, and and WIM is going to be at. Our, our local whim chapter will be at amy um their their booth is right next to mine actually so. okay yeah um i'm trying trying to go to west tech okay in california, yeah uh, in november i have ulterior motives for that one but um because it's california in november yeah <laughs> <laughs> partially yes yeah. <laughs> um so but I, I that's not set in stone yet. So All I don't right. know. Well, if if you do make it to that one, and uh, w- w- I'll see you at, at FebTech, uh, yeah. I owe you a, an old fashioned. Uh, I know you don't drink often, but when you do, you drink really good stuff. And so I'll buy you an old fashioned <laughs> in Chicago. Uh, we'll share a drink. And there we have it, folks. That's a wrap on an absolutely fascinating episode with Emily Wilkins, the dynamic force behind Marketing Metal. We've journeyed from the earliest days of Emily's career right up to the cutting edge strategies she's employing today, all through the lens of how marketing and company culture intersect, interact, and influence each other. We navigated the cultural shifts within manufacturing and how they are impacting marketing strategies. It's been enlightening, thought-provoking, and truly encouraging to hear Emily's Emily's take on these topics, and I'm sure you'll agree. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, or even if you just learned something new, don't keep it to yourself. Share this episode with your friends, colleagues, or anybody you think would appreciate a fresh take on marketing and manufacturing. We'd also love it if you'd take a moment to rate and review the show. Your feedback helps us, and again, the royal us, me, bring you more of the content you love, and it helps other listeners find the show because when you rate us, it rockets us up the the charts on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So also don't forget to check out the website, manufacturingculturepodcast.com for more exclusive content, updates on future episodes, and to immerse yourselves into the wonderful world of culture and our amazing industry of manufacturing. Now, as we wind things up, I want to leave you with a thought. Whether you're in the thick of the manufacturing sector or just a curious onlooker, remember, it's the people, the culture, and the drive to innovate that truly fuels this industry. And as Emily shows us, it's not not just about making things. It's about making things better together. Until next time, have a great day and keep making things. 